Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome for another uh, discussion we are having today at Nehru Planetarium. So uh, we have uh, talked about on many of the topics related to astronomy and space science. Today, we are here to uh, have some detailed discussion about the Nehru Planetarium. So this is a virtual tour of Nehru Planetarium, which will also talk about the various exhibits available at the Planetarium Gallery. And to talk more about this uh, exhibitions uh, and the objects we have in the Planetarium Gallery, we have with us Pratyaksh uh, Malhotra. Uh, if you talk about Pratyaksh, uh, Pratyaksh is an astronomy science communicator and a founder of Astro Sages, a community of scientists, students, space enthusiasts, professor and amateur astronomer. Uh, as much as I know, Pratyaksh is all, also associated with many stream uh, projects uh, he's been handling with various science community. And also in the past, he has worked with Nehru Planetarium for many volunteer services and also uh, astronomy projects like radio astronomy workshops and Python and many more. So he's a very uh, young amateur astronomer who is very passionate about the subject. And today he is with us to talk more detail about the uh, various exhibits at the Planetarium Gallery. So. Planetarium, welcome you, Pratyaksh. And now we are over to you to have a very great virtual walk of the Heru Planetarium in detail. So over to you. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot for the warm welcome. And to start with the exhibition tour, uh, I would like to screen share the PPT which I made with all my heart and hard work. Uh, so let's start with the presentation. So let's start with the presentation of the virtual tour of the planetarium, which I made. So here is the virtual tour of the planetarium, New Delhi. So this is a video which will show you how planetarium actually looks like when you take a tour uh, in reality. So today we are having a virtual tour of So here is the gate for the theater, which we'll observe afterwards. And from here, the exhibition starts. In progressing presentation, I will, I will tell you each exhibition detail in detail. Okay. So what are these? I will tell you in detail in the upcoming slides. So see how many children are there every day, thousands uh, around thousands of students visit planetarium. So you can see how famous our planetarium is. From here, we start with the cosmological exhibitions. Earlier was medieval time, like old instruments, what are used in, what were used by early men and medieval men. Okay, so from here, the actual science begins, like how history of the universe and all these exhibitions tell us. Calendars, which events we are about to observe, redshift, gravitational lens, Einstein's greatest theory. And here is the, the basic attraction, the main attraction. I would like to give you an overview in the upcoming slide. Okay. So first, a small introduction of the Nehru Planetarium, New Delhi. The Nehru Planetarium in New Delhi is situated in the green surroundings of the Teen Murthy House. Earlier, the official residence of India's first prime minister, Jawaharlal Nehru, and now a museum in his memory. Conscious of the fact that an understanding of the spirit and method of science was crucial for children to become responsible citizens, Nehru liked every opportunity to be provided to them in this endeavor. So in 1964, the Jawaharlal Nehru Memorial Fund was set up to promote his ideas and subsequently it undertook to build the Nehru Planetarium with its primary aim being the promotion of astronomy education. Nehru Planetarium is now a wing of the Nehru Memorial Museum and Library. 
the planetarium has been constantly improvising and innovating programs for its visitors the strength of the planetarium lies in its live interactions and programs for visitors students and amateur astronomers the planetarium is always active with program for schools and colleges students and for amateur astronomers through the year there are number of workshops or observing activities just like uh, in uh, around two to three weeks uh, ago there was a partial eclipse uh, so i was also there and i also observed this activity so it was so amazing so there are also astronomy quiz and art competitions in the months of february and august the regular programs of the planetarium includes public shows at 11:30 am starting 1:30 pm 3 pm 4 pm these topics include in these programs are continuously updated so you are every time updated with the uh, topics whenever you will uh, come to planetarium for a show every time you will get new knowledge new information okay so at present the program on solar system is being run at planetarium other programs include digital 2d programs on asteroid astronauts light pollution etc now our journey start with the first attraction you will observe when you enter the nehru planetarium the rapdp space master planetarium projector so this is a small video which will show you how this projector looks like and its aligned features just one minute so uh, like you can see there is some technical glitch so no issue i will play external this uh, externally the video of this exhibit okay so just one minute so here you can see to have the shows which we all enjoy at nehru planetarium it was made in germany and it was provided here for the uh, planetarium shows okay so this was the projector which was used earlier now the uh, the right currently we are using a opto mechanical and digital planetarium projector equipment okay so let's let me give you a little information about this projector rad rapdp space master planetarium projector so this projector has served the planetarium for 25 long years from 1984 to 2010 okay see the planetarium has successfully used this projector for reaching out to millions of visitors that include nobel laureate joseph h taylor of princeton university nasa astronaut dr joe allen and several other scientists from india and abroad this projector as i said was replaced with the state of art opto mechanical and digital planetarium projector equipment so the next exhibit is regarding uh, the first exhibit i would like to say is regarding why the night sky is dark okay a very stupid question we say but this is not actually stupid this is having a very deep meaning in this exhibit we are provided with the peeping hole where a simulation is shown of the night sky with many stars placed in a uniform pattern under a dark circumstance in this exhibit we are informed if the universe was infinite with infinite number of stars with a uniform distribution over space no matter in which direction you look at there must be a star present that would send you light and thus sky would be blazingly bright 
But however, there are many vacant zones in the sky, and our universe is finite in size. Age is around three point eight billion years, and contains a finite number of stars, ten to the power twenty two to ten to the power twenty four. Thus, night sky appears dark. So the fact which here we are getting to, uh, we are getting is that our universe is finite in size, and the number of stars is also finite. So there are vacant zones in our space. where not ev- in every weekend so like in every zone there is no like number of stars present not in a uniform pattern that's why we see we can we observe space to be dark okay so this is a video which will tell us how you will observe using a peeping hole what is there in the peeping hole when you see uh if i say if you observe there is a small this type of thing small small bluish blue dots here you can see as my camera is not able to capture all the things at that time when i was making video but if i will tell you this blue dot which you are seeing here in this video that was the stars they are showing inside that if uniform uh, how stars are placed in the space in uh, in our galaxy space which you are seeing okay so this will this exhibit will tell you well, how the uh, space looks when you see it from outside the earth okay now seeing is believing this the second exhibit tells us that it is believed that astronomy as a science is approximately 17000 years old the nibra disk okay this is the nibra disk is considered this is a uh, exhibit shown in that seeing is believing uh, exhibition the nibra disk is considered to be the oldest astronomy artifacts in the world made around 3600 years ago the disk shows heavenly bodies like the sun the moon as well as the planets star cluster the seven stars at the center of the sky can you see this part here this is the planets which we see the kritika nakshatra in hindi which we say and the m your uh, m45 okay messier object 45 which we say the kritika nakshatra or the seven sisters very prominent constellation early men were seeing this this is a uh, this gives us uh, information or tells us that early men were so fond of astronomy and sky now this is a mask which we say this is the inuit spirit mask the inuit spirit is believed believed to be keep moon so this spirit actually the inuit spirit early men uh, of that uh, region thought that is believed to keep moon at the center with air around and the hoops which you are seeing here the hoops the circle concentric represent the boundary of the cosmos and feathers the small feathers which are attached on this mask represent the stars so this is actually a spirit mask which is believed to keep moon at the center which is placed at the our look in our night sky how moon is placed this spirit is associated with that to keep the uh, moon in that position okay so again an- another ex- uh, feature we see is the first world map the oldest known world map in the imago mundi of 6th century bc babylonia the map shows babylon at the center of the world with seven islands around so this is the first world map you, you will observe and the next thing which we will see is the first planetarium so the lascox caves painted around 16500 years ago maybe a prehistoric planetarium in which humanity first charted the stars three points in the right image are interpreted as the stars vega deneb and altair and this creates these three stars which we are talking about this triangle here it tells is it is also known as the summer triangle with stars vega deneb and altair and is so called the summer triangle a map of the pleiades and hades are anticipated in other image so there are also uh, evidence of pleiades which we see here Along with the Taurus constellation, the seven sisters which I talked earlier, the Messier object forty-five. Okay, so you can see how Pleiades is so much popular with the early men. 
Now the celestial calculator, the third exhibit tells us about the celestial calculator. So this here is the Astrolab and its information beginning with 1438 sailors started locating their position on sea with latitude. So latitude decided with Mariner's Astrolab by measuring height of pole star in degrees from the horizon. So what actually this instrument is used for that it is used to calculate the angle of polaris from the horizon and the alt angle or the altitude which is measured with that star polaris is actual latitude of our location so this was uh, intensively used even now people from navy merchant navy use uh, latitude from polaris to get their location latitude locations okay so here we all know sundial a sundial is a horological device that tells us the time of the day in the narrowest sense of the word is it consists of a flat plate the dial and a nomen which cast a shadow on the dial as the sun appears to move through the sky the shadow aligns with different hour lines which are marked on the dial just like here we observe here these are the lines which are marked on the dial to indicate indicate the time okay now a very interesting equipment which is shown in this exhibit is the yashti yantra yashti means a stick so yashti yantra was developed by bhaskaracharya and also have been referred to as dhi yantra okay yashti yantra is used to calculate height of any object so you can calculate height of any object using this yantra and if you want you can capture the screenshot of this page so that you can use this formula to actually demonstrate your own uh, this yashti yantra you can create your own the yashti yantra and try to find different heights and calculate okay so the next exhibit is ancient and medieval astronomy so here our jantar mantar comes so jantar mantar is located in the modern city of new delhi Jantar Mantar literally means instruments for measuring the harmony of the heavens. The site is one of the five, the, like the other four are located in Ujjain, Mathura, Varanasi, okay, and Jaipur. Uh, so, and built by the Maharaja Jai Singh, two of Jaipur from 1723 onwards, revising the calendar and astronomical tables. So, these monuments are continuously revising the astronomical tables and calendar for us since 1723 okay jai singh born in 19 uh, in born in 1688 into a royal rajput family that ruled the regional kingdom was born into an era of education that maintained a keen interest in astronomy so not only jai singh his uh, his uh, ancestors were also so much having keen interest in astronomy so they were also funding him they were also helping him to build these monuments that's why we are having five jantar mantars in india okay so one is in ujjain mathura varanasi jaipur and delhi i believe one of them uh, maybe in varanasi is actually uh, destroyed due to some mughal uh, something that was linked i will give you information okay so the another feature which you will observe at the jantar mantar is the ram yantra two large cylindrical structures with open top used to measure the altitude of stars based on the latitude and longitude on the earth now the basic attraction the main attraction we can say of the jantar mantar is the samrat yantra the samrat yantra or the supreme instrument is a giant triangle that is basically an equal r sundial it is 70 feet high 114 feet long at the base and 10 feet thick it has a 128 foot long hypotenuse that is parallel to the earth's axis and points towards the north pole samrat mantra can calculate the local time at an accuracy of up to two seconds and is considered the world's largest sundial okay so world's largest sundial is in India, the Samrat Yantra. Now, the next exhibition, exhibit we will see is the Copernican Revolution. 
Nicholas Copernicus is considered to be the father of the heliocentric model, which states that the Earth, along with the other planets, moves around the Sun, which is placed at the center of the solar system. The heliocentric model that we accept today is due to the contribution made by Copernicus, Tycho Brahe, and Johannes Kepler. The last pages of the Copernicus book on the revolutions of heavenly bodies were published while he was on his deathbed. It is believed that Copernicus woke up from his coma, looked at the book, and died. Then died in peaceful death. So he was so so much like we can say passionate about astronomy that to see his book to spread his idea he woke up from the coma on his own look at the book and then died a peaceful death so you can see how much astronomy can give you even you can come from death position also for just a moment to see how much you are having getting changed in this world so astronomy has so much power now the this exhibit tells us more about the retrograde motion okay so retrograde motion in in astronomy actual or apparent portion of body in a direction opposite to that direct motions of most member of the solar system or other astronomical or systems with the preferred direction of motion so basically what is retrograde motion like if we can take example of mars when we are observing mars daily 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 at some moment of time some uh, at some day we will observe that mars is getting shifted in a zigzag line like we can see here like mars is mars position is little bit not going in the forward direction like it was going earlier but it is getting shifted in the backward so this tells us that the our orbit is smaller than the orbit of mars and very interesting fact linked to the retrograde motion is that there is a very uh, famous question that how early men used to observe like uh, how early men know there are planets like there are these are planets not stars so this is also a fact that the retrograde motion planets are showing in sky night sky which tell us that this is not a star this is not constantly moving in a fixed line but doing some irregular motions okay retrograde motions now the uh, next exhibit is indian astronomical text so aryabhatta is considered to be one of the most prominent indian astronomers he in his book the aryabhatta talks about time different astronomical units methods to calculate the longitude of planets and much more related to the fields of science mathematics and astronomy this text was one step ahead from its predecessors such as the vedanga jyotish now here uh, if you see this book uh, in this exhibit is uh, shown and it is from surya siddhanta in and it tells us about the exact uh, like many uh, knowledge of, it gives us knowledge about the eclipses like when it is going to take uh, place what is the uh, uh, what is the size of sun in comparison to moon when the eclipse is taking place they calculated using this okay so this book tells us about this exhibition uh, shown here is regarding this surya siddhanta just take care surya siddhanta it is showing the page from surya siddhanta now instruments that change the world the next exhibition is in instruments that change the world and maybe you all get the idea that what instrument we are talking about yes we are talking about the telescope the first telescope used by galileo uh, for observation telescopes were also used like the early telescopes were prim primarily used for making earth bound observations such as surveying the military tactics galileo galilei was part of a small group of astronomers who turned telescopes toward the heavens after hearing about the danish perspective glass in 1609 galileo constructed his own telescope he subsequently demonstrated the telescope is when is his demonstration of the telescope earned him a lifetime lectureship okay and here in this exhibition there's a book an old textbook is placed in this exhibit which is showing us the pleiades star cluster so this is a very again the pleiades came so you can see how pleiades is so much 
uh, I say plats, pladis. This is my pronunciation. Like I, I'm very fond of saying is pladis. So it is plats, but I say pladis. Okay, so don't mind. So you can see how famous is pladis star cluster. Now, this is this slides will tell us the different type of telescope. The first one is refracting telescope uses lens to gather light and focus it to a point. This was the first type of telescope to be invented in the early 17th century and was first used for serious astronomy by Galileo 400 years ago. The image produced are upright, which makes refractor good for ground-based observations. Yeah, this is very interesting and very important fact that. The while using refracting telescopes, you will not see inverted image. Okay, like we used to see in, like we are seeing if uh, upright image only. If I am seeing a mountain, you will able to see mountain with same dimension, not upright. Okay, it is not tilted. Uh, next one is the Newtonian reflector. So Newtonian telescopes are uh, reflectors. They use a mirror rather than a lens to focus a light from distant objects. Reflecting telescopes were first invented by Isaac Newton to avoid the problem of chromatic aberration found with refractors. They use a curved mirror to focus light onto a second flat mirror from which light is directed to an eyepiece. In reflector telescope, this is a practical thing which I am telling you. Maybe her theory is not uh, related to that, but I have used both telescopes. In refractor telescope, I always see straight image. Like it, if it is like this mountain, I'm seeing mountain in the same. Maybe it is inverted like left to right, but it is actual in the up, uh, same position. I'm seeing that object. But in reflector telescope, what I see is like image is always getting from top to back, like you will see the peak downwards and the mountain base is in the above. Okay, so that thing is with reflectors. The Smith Cassegrain telescope, the third type SCT, have advantage that these are much smaller than other types of telescope because they use a series of mirrors to fold the light path. All professional telescope, including the Falkis telescope, are now of the SCT design. SCT uses a spherical primary mirror to focus the parallel rays of incoming light onto a convex secondary mirror. This then reflects the light back through a hole in the primary mirror to the eyepiece of the detector. So basically what we are seeing here, Cassegrain telescopes, uh, actually uh, I have used, I have seen through a Cassegrain telescope and if my reflector telescope is having two meter of focal length, 200, uh, what we can say. 2000 your centimeter focal length so 2000 mm focal length uh, my tube of reflector telescope will be same like it will be around uh, ranging it will be 2000 little bit we can add 50 mm it is it will be around 2050 mm in length but if i use same focal length cassegrain telescope it may be of just this size uh, we can say uh, one and a half feet so this is because it is using multiple reflection phenomena okay so nowadays cassegrain telescopes are used widely now the next exhibit is seeing farther with light how far we can see and this exhibit uh, there's a very attractive tube type of thing kept which is having a button along with it and if you press that button for long we'll able to see the actual working of a reflector telescope newtonian so here you can see if i press for long there's a laser going on from this side to that side which actually shows the working of the reflector telescope how light is getting bounced with the mirror, primary mirror at the back of the telescope. Okay. Now, the very interesting exhibition, the next exhibit uh, tells us how telescopes, we can use telescopes as a time machine. We all know that light has a constant speed. It takes time to travel from one point to another. 
it roughly takes eight minutes for light to travel from sun to the earth. This means the sun we at which you are look, looking right now existed eight minutes in the past. So if sun ex exploded at this very instant, we'll get to see the explosion after eight minutes. A telescope can definitely see farther than a human eye. Imagine that a galaxy is 100 million light years from us. Using a powerful telescope, we can see how the particular galaxy looked 100 million years in the past. The star Betelgeuse is roughly 642 light years from us. Maybe it has exploded, but we will not able to uh, get that piece of information that if it is there or not, the Betelgeuse star after we will get that information after 642 light, uh, 642 years from now. Okay. So in this, uh, this is a very interesting pick which I found in that uh, time machine thing. This is a pick of the V V838 Monoceritos. This is actually a nova, an exploded uh, star. It it is forming a nebula. So it is a binary star system in the constellation Monoceros, and this is about nineteen thousand light years from Sun. So actual thing which I I would like to tell here is that this thing is getting bigger and bigger. This cloud is getting bigger and bigger and actually Hubble uh, captured this uh, Monoceritos uh, nebula getting bigger. It has actually captured it using many years of data. So there's a video available on the net. I was not able to place at that time, but if you can visit, uh, search the net using this information, V838 Monoceritos, you can you are able to see the actual video. This That video is actually showing the swelling, like swelling of this nebula. It is getting bigger. Okay. Now the next exhibit we see is the Indian explorers of space. So here's a space suit kept and the space suit shown here also displayed in the area belongs to Mr. Ravish Malhotra. Uh, while Mr. Malhotra never went to space himself in 1984, he served as backup to first Indian to go to space. That was Mr. Rakesh Sharma. Now here uh, is a very interesting thing we can see. Earlier people, uh, this exhibit is not uh, placed now. It is given to ISRO for the research purpose, but uh, for the upcoming missions. But what is this is, I would like to tell you. Earlier people used to observe a section of Soyuz T-10 spacecraft at Planetarium used by Rakesh Sharma, the first Indian astronaut to travel to space to return to Earth. So it was used by Rakesh Sharma to return to Earth while he went in Soyuz T-11. When asked by Ms. Indira Gandhi uh, on how India looked from outer space, Sharma replied, Sare jahan se achha. So, Okay, so you can see that the words of Rakesh Sharma was also by uh, after observing India from outside the Earth. Is like Sare Jahan Sir. Sare in, India is so much versatile in features and even from outside also you can see so beautiful are the countries. So next exhibit we see is the multi-view universe. So how you can, this exhibit tells us how you can observe universe with different type of wavelengths like radio, infrared, x-ray, gamma ray and many more. In uh, so let me play the video. So here you can see universe in different. So if I see, if I'm pressing the infrared, you can see how infrared uh, image of our galaxy. It is showing here uh, currently the galaxy image of infrared. Okay. So it is giving the wavelength. Okay. Lights tell stories. This exhibit is actually uh, related to the phenomena of uh, like the process we use spectroscopy. So let me tell you, uh, did you know that the light emitted by spectrum emitted by a star and compared it with spectra of individual star can tell us about its composition. Scientists can analyze the light spectrum emitted by a star and compare it with the spectrum of individual elements. Each element produces a distinct set of lines of the spectrum while radiating or absorbing, absorbing energy. It is almost 
like each element has a unique barcode so basically if we get the barcode of each element and if you take the barcode from stars like if we get the collected data of the spectrum they are releasing we can actually uh, able to get, uh, get the piece of information that will tell us which all elements the star is having and in what amount okay so and this procedure is known as spectral photometry with this exhibit tell us now the next exhibit is journey with light here uh, the speed of light in vacuum we all know is this much to around 2 lakh uh, 99000 or 3 lakhs uh, uh, kilometer per second which i can say in uh, a vague way this obviously is a very large value the exhibit in front of you states that the light can take anywhere between uh, 4 50 uh, 4 minutes to around 12 minutes to travel from earth to mars okay so light is taking around 4 minutes 15 seconds to 12 minutes 50 seconds to travel from earth to mars this is a very small number compared to the time taken by man made space spacecraft to reach mars that is the spacecraft which we sent to mars takes around 7 months to travel from earth to mars so you can see light is having so much speed it is like if we are able to crack the speed of light in some way in future we are able to actually do the time travel so in upcoming slide i will tell you that also now the another piece of information here i would like to tell you is that two, 2022 marks the 45th anniversary of nasa launching one of its most successful project the automatic spacecraft voyager 1 okay the probe not only coped with the interplanetary missions brilliantly but also provided scientists with a large amount of valuable information about the heliosphere and the interstellar space the speed of voyager 1 at launch was 17 km per second so it quickly reached jupiter and began surveying the planet in january 1979 it approached saturn in november 1980 so fast it did the spacecraft today voyager 1 is more than 23 billion kilometers away from earth and it is continuously going farther and farther I mean, in if uh, in upcoming like say 2000 years after 2000 years it reaches the next star proxima centauri and there are aliens or some civilization going on at that uh, on some planet of that star maybe they will see that uh, our voyager and they are uh, able to judge that okay there are other civilizations also and uh, nearby only so there is a disk also placed on the voyager which is uh, which shows about the like on which planet uh, from sun we are placed and all this information and how we look that disk tell us the gold disk which we say now this video is about uh, the exhibit uh, the placed some uh, piece of information our screen is placed in this exhibit and let me play what all things it tell us so here we can surf with our near neighbors our distant neighbors where we can go for the future exploration and how this exhibition exhibit will tell us about this okay so let's go to next exploring planetary world now this exhibit is very interesting like i cannot uh, i just made the whole video about this okay i just made the whole video and that video will tell you each and everything okay so just wait these are the these circles or these concentric lines represents that how many missions we have been uh, launching to different planets like venus moon see moon how many missions to the moon we are having mars and same way jupiter saturn and other amazing okay so i think we are able to get the idea of this exhibit what it tells that this this is actually a, an old image like the old data now these circles are maybe not this much this much okay so it is about to get revised so this scale will tell us that now, what weight it will show uh, 
on different planets like Mars, Moon, or Jupiter. This is the weighing machine this exhibit holds. Okay, so there's a weighing machine also placed and it will tell you each exact value that how much your weight will be on this planet or this planet or this planet. And if you want, you can capture the screenshot of this uh, as this is uh, given data with the multiplication factor or yeah, like your weight on earth, if you will write here and if you multiply it with the multiplication factor, you can get your actual weight on that planet okay so if you want you can get the screenshot so the next exhibit is the history of the universe about three 300 million years after the big bang small irregularities in densities of gas and dust were amplified and started to collapse under their own gravitation and structures like stars and galaxies galaxy form so this exhibit tells us about how stars and galaxies started to form just after the Big Bang due to some, not just after in the cosmological scale, 300 million years here is very small. Okay. So just after the, I say Big Bang around 300 million years ago, there was some irregular irregularities and small, 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 uh, we can say atoms started to getting combined each other, uh, getting started to combine with each other and they were able to form the large structures which we see now galaxies and even us we are also made from that elements and atoms only so we are also the same material which universe gave at the time of its birth so my actual age of this body is actual the same age of universe okay the big bang event is a physical theory that describes this is about information of big bang so how uh, it describes about how the universe expanded from an initial state of high density and temperature so layer universe was believed to be uh, like it was a, it was believed to be a primeval atom where there was so much high density and from there it suddenly like that is the main question how it uh, expanded on its own so it suddenly blasted or expanded started to expand like getting big 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 and a bang was there and the universe which we see now is as you are seeing i'm talking i'm the same universe which is talking with you okay so the next exhibit is calendar of events which we see the planetarium and it it will tell you about the details of events which we are about to observe the early events space exploration missions uh, and the upcoming astronomical events okay is the dial to show all the astronomical events that will took place and the history of exploration and space science technology this is the dial to go okay so this was the dial which we'll see which we observe uh, which will tell us the astronomical missions and all that data the next exhibit is regarding the red ship okay so have you ever noticed that the siren of an approaching train sounds shriller than that of a train moving away from you this is an example so when an ambulance or a train is coming it will sound okay okay it is coming, so it is getting slowly, 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 louder, 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 louder. And when it is going from uh, going away from you, it is sounding slower, 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 slower. So that is the Doppler effect which we see. Okay, and it helps in understanding the relationship between the speed of an object and the frequency of waves emitted by it. This principle can also be applied to astronomy. Moving celestial objects may appear red or blue in color when they move away from us or towards us respectively. These effects are known as redshift and blue shift and have helped astronomers in comparing the speeds and distances of faraway galaxies. So this was used by Hubble uh, and many more uh, astronomers to actually, like basically Hubble gave the idea that universe is expanding. So this was the thing, uh, the red shift, the Doppler effect used by Hubble. Okay. Now the next exhibit, which we see is the gravitational lens. Okay. So this is an image which we see here, uh, actually shows how a galaxy is getting formed. 
for getting circle around the star uh, around the star which we are seeing or some massive object so light is getting bent and due to that we can see a curvature or thing which we uh, usually observe after light is uh, passed through a lens so that's why it's called gravitation is forming a lens so actual uh, the main description i would tell is sir isaac newton's universal law of gravity helps scientists conveniently calculate the gravitational force between any two object in the universe but even this model had some limitations to address the problem faced by newton's model einstein gave his general theory of relativity he proposed that gravity exists as a field and can a, can even bend light okay so this assertion in the fundamental principle behind the, uh, behind is the uh, principle behind gravitational lensing okay so gravitational lensing is the phenomena in which the light from a distant source get distorted due to the gravitational field of a massive body which i told you the visual is quite similar to that looks through a magnifying glass hence the name okay so this thing we can see gravitational lens so there is very interesting exhibit like a movable working exhibit uh, kept here which i would like to show in this slide okay so so here these things tell us how a planet moves around the star which is very heavy according to the cosmic level it has more gravity than the planet the star so how it will move so if i go with the ball consider this as a planet it is going and our space time is here and i bend it using this how it will move this exhibit tell us this so you observe that the it didn't didn't took that that ball didn't took a straight line it bent little bit so uh, what happens is when space time is warped due to the heavy massive objects it is getting curved stars are actually moving in a circle oh star around stars planets are moving like our earth is moving around that star in a circular orbit it is due to this phenomena when space time is uh, curved it bends okay so if in that screen that uh, what we can say a rubber sheet is there when it is getting curved with us using this ball we can see there is a slight circular motion and this is actual cause of uh, planets moving in a circular path around sun okay now the last exhibit of our planetarium is weighing weighing the universe okay we all use devices such as weighing scales and spring balance to find out the mass of an object but do you know what the mass of universe is no right no one does even though there are several several estimates made by astrophysicists over the decades we don't know for sure how much matter the universe contains because most of it nearly 85% is invisible that is known as dark matter and it is one of the most captivating concept of modern physics Okay, so what dark matter is? Let me tell you a very brief idea. I will I I will give is that uh, dark matter is actually uh, linked to the motions of stars, speed of stars. Like if you see a galaxy, uh, there are stars at the center, near center, and outside of out uh, like the outskirts of the galaxy. What it should be uh, there? This phenomena is the stars moving. near to the center must be having speed greater and this uh, in comparison to the stars which are moving at the outside or the outskirts of the galaxy but it is not the case when it was observed the speed of stars moving around the center and the stars moving at the outside or the boundary of the galaxy are is same the speed of both stars like both the group of stars is same so why this happens this is this should not be the case this can only happen in uh, in a phenomena or in a uh, like in a thing we can say is that there is some extra mass at the boundary of the universe uh, a boundary of our galaxy which we are seeing okay so the galaxies are warped or it is having a sheet of dark matter around them which are helping the outside one star the group of stars which are on the boundaries of galaxies to move faster okay so this is a very brief i gave you very vast uh, dark matter concept but astronomers found 
now we are getting the idea of how much weighing uh, how much weight our universe is holding but astronomers found if the mass of universe is larger than 5 into 10 to the 10 to the power minus 30 grams per cubic centimeter the gravitational force will some day prevail and universe will collapse upon itself if instead the universe mass is lower than the expansion above it is given okay uh, so uh, if the mass is lower than the expression which is given uh, the expansion will win and the universe will expand forever okay so is this uh, expression which is given if uh, 5 into 10 to power minus 30 gram per cubic centimeter the gravitational force agar is uh, if from this uh, expression universe is the uh, your it is lower or larger okay so from this expression if the mass is lower or larger there will be expansion or collapse linked to this okay so for now uh, these are the exhibit which uh, planetariums uh, at planetarium is having and uh, okay so uh, i would like to give you a brief detail about the stellarium software and how it is used uh, like for just now i will simulate the night sky of today today's night sky and i will uh, tell you which all planets you are able to see uh, okay so let's go so let's start with uh, night sky so this is my software which uh, which we use and it is called stellarium okay so as i can see it is morning time so it is showing sun with the grass and everything okay with directions you can also see directions here east south east okay so let me simulate it into the night time okay so let us time travel okay everybody let's time travel Uh, so Pratiksh, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So before you start with the planetarium, uh, uh, sorry, the Stellarium application, I would also like to mention here that all the exhibit you explained in your presentation uh, that was really very nice and very interactive. So thank you, first of all, for that for putting so much hard work in preparing this uh, uh, slide format. to make our uh, viewers and students who are interested to know about the exhibit and all so first of all thank you for that and also i would like to say uh, welcome in. that all the exhibit uh, inside the planetarium premises uh, are self explanatory so all the information uh, written in the exhibits are in both the language english and hindi so anyone who are planning to come here at the planetarium they can they can read and get a self explanation about the exhibit like what they are all about and also very soon uh, like only from this month uh, uh, from november end or probably the december first week planetarium will be getting shut down for the upgradation process so as uh, from the manual to 2d format we have been upgraded so very soon will be upgraded to 2d to 3d so the best viewing uh, Uh, uh best viewing projection uh, very soon our viewers will be getting uh, through the planetarium show and yes indeed planetarium is one of the biggest attraction in the delhi uh, people come here to understand the cosmos and uh, to have the better understanding about the night sky and what objects celestial things we can see in the sky so uh, in the coming time probably the best viewing option uh, you will be getting with the three dimensional uh, viewing inside the sky theater so with this now i think we'll we'll take a move ahead to understand today's night sky and quickly i think in a 5 minute we'll have the understanding about uh, the night sky so uh, pratik over to you so that you can explain uh, uh, the stellarium software which is uh, easy and also free available so anyone who want to make their understanding better in this direction can use it and have uh, they can at least start knowing the night sky so over to you okay thanks a lot ma'am and whenever our planetarium will be like starting its uh, 
the two the three D shows. I would like to see it. I'm very like fond of seeing that show. Okay, ma'am, I will surely visit. Definitely. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's start with our night sky today. Just a minute. Oh. Mm. Okay. So as you can as you can see, the timing which here we are seeing is uh around. uh 11 pm okay so let me little bit make it around 8 of 8 pm okay let us do time travel in back okay wait 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 okay so just a minute wait. so okay uh this is around 5 46 pm okay so as we all know winters are here so we are getting a night very early uh in comparison to summer time okay so let's start with the 6 pm timing only so we can see some planets which we are not able to see afterwards so this is the night sky if i see from the east we can observe the aldebaran which is the brightest star of our taurus constellation or the vrishabh rashi we say in hindi so we can see like this the constellation how it is it looks like if we connect all the stars of that particular constellation and if i get the imaginary uh, which early man used to observe that okay this constellation looks like this if i open that feature so here so you can see how taurus looks and what uh, and what all things you can see and very interesting thing here you can see uh, this one just with the aldebaran the brightest object brighter than the aldebaran when you will observe is the mars okay so the red planet which we will observe just beside the aldebaran into the today's night sky okay so we spotted just now one planet and the famous pleiades plaids but i will say pleiades as i told you because it's my pronunciation i like that word so pleiades if i show you it is just here if i draw a line from here okay pleiades is there so this is our pleiades okay so it is showing each and star name because this software is very detailed let me tell uh, find using the finder in the sky mm Okay, so Plaid is also known as M forty five. Okay, see here we can see Plaid is in a vague way, and if I open the viewer, you can see how Plaid is look. Okay, so the prominent star, the seven brightest stars we we observe in Plaid is. are there also known as the seven sisters okay so this is the pleiades you will observe and if i go on this ecliptic which goes from here a uh, little bit northeast to southeast the ecliptic you will find all the zodiac constellations aldebaran see aries aries is also here pisces is also here mean rashi pisces near pisces we like we used to if somebody is interested in astrology we say na like this planet is in this constellation so Pis pisces is uh, jupiter is actually in pisces constellation now 
so here is jupiter let me off this uh, these things so that you can get the idea of how and today there is also conjunction also of jupiter with moon okay so jupiter is getting near to the moon so this phenomenon is known as conjunction and if i go move little bit southeast from that jupiter i can see saturn so here is saturn okay so saturn is here and just beside that and if i tell you the constellation with saturn is there okay so saturn is actually in the capricorn constellation today so as using this software we can tell these things that in which constellation our planet is and how to locate them and just i told you the stars which we see in that uh, one of the slide in that case lacox case on uh, lacox case uh, in this exhibited told us three stars which were deneb altair let me uh, off the this thing okay so the brightest stars which you observe are these three and these forms a triangle the summer triangle deneb vega and altair these three stars from the summer triangle and also used to navigate uh, in the early time okay so as we all know summers are going and winters are coming the summer triangle is about to set and the next winter triangle will come okay and winter triangle is actually the formation of three stars that are sirius the dog betelgeuse and procyon the small dog canis majoris canis minor and your orion constellation star so let me uh, uh, let us locate now the some uh, winter triangle let us time travel and go far uh, further in the time and let us go okay so we are going we are time traveling in future and trying to observe the winter triangle so here capilla is there mars so this capilla is the brightest star of aurige constellation the charioteer you can see here this star is also very bright and easy to uh, identify in night sky but mars is actually brighter than both of these okay mars if you will observe the bright object between aldebaran and capilla you can see mars so yeah orion is our orion has now being prominent in sky it is going up 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 and you can see when this our orion is here okay and with this our winter triangle we are about to observe let me Okay. So I'm also trying to do wait, wait, wait. Okay. Okay. So we have gone very uh farther with the night sky. Okay. No issues. Uh, let us see the. winter triangle let me tell you about the winter triangle which you will observe so this is the winter triangle betelgeuse sirius procyon a very interesting fact about sirius is that the big dog which we see this dog type of uh, constellation you can see na uh, this dog which is showing it is actually it always remains with hunter so this is the dog of hunter and there are two dogs one is big dog the sirius canis majoris and one is canis minor okay so canis minor look like this this one small dog and the bigger dog and these both stays with orion so they help us our orion to hunt and these form sirius betelgeuse and procyon forms the winter triangle and the very most interesting fact of our night sky is that sirius is the brightest star of night sky so if you observe anything brighter than this star sirius 
it's not a star sorry to say but it's not a star it is actually a planet or some satellite moving with slow speed so if you observe anything mind that thing if you observe anything brighter than this star sirius just or orion is very easy to spot in night sky so if you observe uh, sirius with that and if you uh, like seeing anything brighter than sirius it is actually a planet and this is also a classification how we can differ planets from stars okay so like just like i say jupiter is very bright than uh, brighter than sirius venus is very brighter than sirius i cannot say about saturn saturn is very dim but if you want to locate saturn you have to first see that type of uh, in that ecliptic go on that ecliptic which i showed from north east to south east and try to find an object which is not uh, actually twinkling like stars twinkle na so planets do not twinkle they actually have a constant source of point of light okay so that type way you can actually find the planets and differentiate planets with stars okay so in this way our night sky was is... a little uh, brief about the night sky i think uh, now we shall uh, wrap this uh, session yes, because okay. then the video will become really long okay no issue ma'am no issue yeah okay so this is our night sky try to do photography of the night sky and share with planetarium and okay so thank you all for joining us for this uh, session and i'm also a learner trying to improve every day you know so okay so thank you ma'am thanks a lot for giving me so, this opportunity thank you pratiksh for working so hard to give uh, the little insight about what all exhibit uh, we have inside the planetarium because generally when the people come inside planetarium they are uh, they are more into see the show we have uh, about the uh, space and planets but very less people give their time to have the detailed information uh, about the exhibit we have in the gallery and they are equally important like the show show is a treat to watch but uh, these are the real fact the scientific information about about the various uh, uh, scientific things we have inside the uh, exhibition gallery so uh, with your help uh, we have created this uh, user friendly uh, interactive medium today so now people uh, who are uh, globally across can see and can have the detailed virtual tour about the nehru planetarium so in future we really hope everyone to come at the planetarium and have a look about the gallery and also the upgraded show which uh, soon everyone will see about in 3d so thank you pratyaksh thank you for your time and your uh, uh, planetarium is really uh, thank you for your working so hard to make this presentation to make more like uh, for more interactive uh, as much as you can make to make the people understand thank you everyone yes. thank you and really hope to see you all welcome ma'am welcome thank you